All right, so now that we have the complex number here, the unit complex number written uh, such as uh, using these components, cosine theta and sine theta. So now we've gotten here, we've gone over the matrix and rotation matrix. So now let's rotate the, or relate all of them all together. So relating the complex pa plane, which is uh, basically the set of all the complex numbers over here, uh, with the rotation matrix. So let's try to manipulate our previous rotation matrix equation to try to get it in a form similar to the above complex equation. So this is the, the complex number. Uh, and now let's take a look at the R matrix. So here R equals to cosine theta. This is the matrix. Cosine on the uh, on the on these column or oh yeah on the a forward diagonal and the signs on the on the opposite uh, diagonal over there on the backward diagonal. We'll call that backward diagonal. All right, and then there's these a negative one for this sign there. So let's just write this down and try to break it down using our matrix addition setup. All right, so we're gonna have R equals to cosine theta on the top and cosine theta is on the far column. And then we have a sin, negative sine theta, just notice the pattern. And sine theta, like that. All right, so what we could do now is we can ma manipulate this setup using our addition setup. Remember when we do matrix addition, we just scroll back above here. So matrix addition, basically uh, these are just added terms. So we could separate this big one into separate ones here. And to do that, what we'll do is uh, notice the pattern here. So we have the cosine, cosine, we want those in, in its own matrix, and the sine and sines in their own matrix. So what we could do is write this out as cosine theta, and then this one's zero. This one's zero. This one cosine theta. So in other words, we have that. And then what we're going to do now is plus, and then we're going to take only the signs now. Zero, and it's going to be negative sine theta, and it's going to be sine theta, it's going to be zero, like that. And uh, we could see basically by a matrix addition, well, this would just get the above set up here, because we would add all the uh, corresponding terms. So cosine theta plus zero is just cosine theta. And then zero pl uh, plus negative sine theta, just get this, et cetera. So this is just the same as the this up top. And now what we'll do is we're, we're just going to factor out the cosine, because then, yeah, when you have a constant there, multiplied inside a matrix, you just put that in every term. So we'll multiply or factor out this cosine theta out of there. And now we're going to be left with uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. When we multiply cosine inside, you just get the cosine on the diagonal there. And the next one's going to be sine theta. So take out the sine. And we're going to be left with a 0. All right, put this like this. 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Like that. All right, so now let's call this matrix right here. I'm going to call this I. This is, a, this is called an identity matrix. Whenever you have a diagonal forward one like this with all 1s and everything else 0. And I'll put the bracket on top just, just so... Uh, yeah, just so it's more clear that it's a matrix. And this one here, I'm going to call this X, because we don't know what this is yet. Let's put that uh, as X with a bracket indicating it's a matrix. And what we get is, let's put R, well, R equals to, let's put this here in this notation, a matrix like that, because we have this cosine, it's not a matrix. And then I, and then plus sine theta X like this. And yeah, so this is what we have here. I'm going to put this all the way here. And I'm going to box this out. All right, so we have uh, the rotation matrix equals to cosine times this I matrix called the identity matrix. And then plus sine theta times this X uh, matrix right here, we'll call that X like that because it's a uh, this one is identity just uh, yeah, because it's one across there. This one has a negative one there. That has interesting properties. So let's go further. All right. And uh, here, yeah, just uh, added a note. Note that the I matrix here, or I bracket uh, inside the bracket, a matrix above is called the identity matrix. Let's put this in uh, bold. So let's compare our above expression. So this one here with that of the complex number or unit complex number. Just a unit length one. Uh, yeah, complex number equation we derived earlier. So compare that with this setup here. All right, so that's z equals cosine theta plus sine theta i. And this one's here. 
So let's write this out. I'm going to write this in this notation. R uh, matrix equals to cosine theta times by the identity matrix I plus sine theta and then X as a big one. Just put a big X like that versus, and I'll put this as right here, VS. I'll put this here versus, actually put it here, VS. Uh, versus uh, the uh, complex number. The unit complex number Z equals to cosine theta is by itself. So this is cosine theta, but I'm going to put a one there. I'm going to put times by one. This one times by I. Times by one plus sine theta times by I, like that. All right, so these look very, very similar. Uh, now let's compare the properties of, well, one and I. So let's compare the properties of I and X with that of one and I, the imaginary number or imaginary unit. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll look at this I and let's square it. So if we have I, yeah, I or bracket I, I squared, this equals to, uh, well, this is number of uh, the I, the identity matrix. This is one, uh, one, one on the diagonal, zero everywhere else. And let's square this. In other words, we're going to do matrix multiplication. So if we square this, all right, here's fix that up squared. This just equals to, well, just matrix multiplication, 0, 1, times it by 1, 0, 0, 1. All right, so again, matrix multiplication. So we just multiply this, the row, with the, um, the column. We go 1 times 1 plus zero times zero. So in other words, we get a one. And the next one is, and also these are the same uh, size, so the, the resulting matrix will be the same as well. And the next thing we're gonna do is, well, this is gonna be a one. Next one is the, the first row in the second column. So one times zero plus zero times one. In other words, we get a zero. And then we shift it over to here and this row. So 0 times 1 is 0, plus 1 times 0 is 0. And then the next one, we get 0 times 1, and 1 times 1. So we get 1. All right, in other words, we get back to our identity matrix. So this equals to i. <laughs> so in other words, we have i squared is equal to y. I mean, is i, I squared is equal to i. Like that. It's quite amazing versus now we'll compare it with vs um yeah compared this with the imaginary number i squared i mean not i squared. Yeah, the imaginary number is just one i mean not the imaginary this one here compared with one so this is the identity matrix let's compare the identity number or just number one one squared is equal to well it's one times one equals to one so then these are these check out so i'll do a check so these work the same. So now that's the first one. And let's check x squared. So let's do this uh, x squared. So this one, x is a 0, negative 1, 1, 0. So let's do that. x squared is equal to 0, negative 1, 1, 0. This equals 2, and then we'll squaring it. So then this equals to 0, negative 1, 1, 0 multiplied by zero, negative one, one, zero. This equals two, and here I just move things around so it fits, now do the matrix multiplication. So this row and this column. So zero times zero uh, is zero, plus uh, negative one times by one. That's gonna be negative one. Now the next one is um, the first row, second column, like this. So we go zero times negative one is zero. Negative one times zero is zero. So we, those add up to zero. And then the next one is over here, over here, and he and um, no, oh, that's the column. This row, column, one times zero is zero, and then plus zero times one is zero. And then the last one is here. One times negative one is negative one plus zero times zero is zero. So we get a negative one here. Yes, yeah, so in other words, this, this is just, well, negative i. <laughs> Remember, this is just one, one, so we put a negative in there, this becomes negative one, negative one. 
Yeah, so this uh, yeah, is equals to negative i. So in, in other words, x squared is equal to negative, one, uh, yeah, negative i, or the negative identity matrix, like that. All right, yeah, so notice the similarities. And first, I'm just going to box this out. And uh, yeah, so box that. And now compare this with the, well, vs, uh, the i squared equals to, well, negative 1. Yeah, which is, yeah, this put over here, which is that imaginary number setup. And this is, I'm just going to box this out like that. And this checks out. <laughs> compare that with this. In other words, this checks out. So this, uh, and notice they're exactly the same. This is the same property. Uh, when you square this, it's still 1. When you uh, square this one here, you get negative, uh, negative, uh, uh, yeah, negative of the identity matrix. And this one is, uh, well, yeah, similar to this one. When you square the i's, it becomes negative one. <laughs> so this is some interesting stuff here. And this deserves a hashtag. Wow. I was actually blown away when I found this up. All right, yeah. So thus, uh, we could say that our rotation matrix is equivalent to an unit complex number. Hashtag amazing. So what we can do is write this out as r. Yeah, r equals to yeah, r equals to uh, cosine theta cosine theta negative sine theta sine theta yeah here's fix that up and now this equals to we could write it in this format cosine of theta times by the identity matrix i'll put this in the bracket like that i plus sine and then the random uh, x, let's put an x uh, matrix. And now switch over that x and put this as cosine theta identity matrix i plus sine theta. And now recall this. I'm going to put this as lowercase i. In other words, it's an imaginary number, uh, but as a matrix. <laughs> so it is just uh, this right here. It's just this right here. That's just I as a, as a matrix form, as a rotation matrix. All right, so we have that. In other words, and now we know that in the complex plane, so when you go back to the complex plane, yeah, this complex plane right here, so number A is cosine, B is sine. Uh, so in other words, uh, this just equals to A uh, identity matrix plus B, and then the I matrix. All right, and uh, I just want to make a note. Uh, this is typically used uh, for the identity matrix, the capital I. But another way you possibly is look at a cap just a one with a bracket inside, but then that probably uh, adds other confusion. But just to match up with this here. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, capital I has a good symmetry or pattern on its own. Because so capital I indicates the real number part, and then the lowercase i is the imaginary one. So anyways, again, this is for the unit uh, complex number uh, length. And now uh, you could write this again. This is the uh, this is the identity matrix, and there is the imaginary matrix. And then when you plug in those inside, so then the, the cosine, sine, etc. This is cosine is just a, sine is just b. So we could write this as a matrix: a negative b, b a. Yes, absolutely fascinating stuff. So there's a whole bunch of ways of writing this matrix, rotation matrix, and relating it to uh, equivalent form of the complex number as a rotation matrix, which is quite amazing.